Like it's it's the it's the thing with the thing. So we're on there. How are you gonna know? You're just gonna know. I'm just gonna know when we roll. All right, let's All right. do it. Stand by. Standing by. I'm sitting by. I keep telling you that. Three, two. <laughs> Welcome, Blazing Nation, to the Contact Buzz. We call this one Temporal Terpenes or Ancestry Potcom. This is the show for can of connoisseurs, budding entrepreneurs, cush bunnies, and anyone else living that green party lifestyle. This show is for adults only, so if you're over 21, check your ID with the bouncer at the door and come on in. Coming up on today's show, we talk... California regs with a California grower. We travel 12,000 years in the way, way back machine. And, dude, we hang 10 with some modern uses of hemp, bruh. All that and more coming up, so stick around to toast your terpenes and catch <laughs> the contact buzz. Now, he's in the know. He can grow. He hosts the show. It's Guillermo. Welcome to the show. This is the Contact Buzz. We're bringing you news, information, and more from around the globe. All about the cannabis lifestyle. Sit back and enjoy. Now, as we always do, we record this show in a, from a secret underground location somewhere in Southern California. The Green Rush capital of the world. It's the Rush, baby. It's the Rush, baby. It's the Rush. Today's going to be a great show. Um, we'll jump right into it with the question of the week. The question of the week. Uh, uh, what do we got there? What's it? To grind or not to grind? That is the question. We've officially become that show that brought a skull on. <laughs> it was just Halloween. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting very Shakespearean with our uh, with our, our question of the week. To grind or not to grind, that is the question. That's the question, RJ. Ooh, that is... So, what head. is it? What is it? Well, I mean, I personally love to grind. Number one, I got these big these big fingers, and so like I feel like if I'm... If I try to like open them all up whenever you're right, crushing I think I'm to doing a fresh more, flower. More damage than, than, than not. But the other part of that is... Like I love the Keef tray, man. <laughs> like the Keef tray, it's all, it's all, it's what it's all about. Yeah, a nice little dust sprinkle bonus on your your bowl a few, maybe a week later or whatever. Right, uh, right. I'm with you. I'm with you. The grinder, and you've seen my grinder. It's uh, oh yeah, you've got a big old like yeah, the yeah. beast. Like I, I thought I had the fancy <laughs> grinder. It was all you know anodized. It's like yeah, you metal imagine? teeth and everything. Dang these little flies. I don't know it's how they under, get underground. underground. Underground bunker problem. filtration man. system. We really need to have that looked at. Well, before the zombies attack. Look. Anyways. Um, yeah, the grinder. It's uh, multi-stage. You got the, the different screens, so you get the Keef catch at the bottom. I dig it. But I'll tell you what. All the time, everywhere, you know, grinders get all gummed up and whatnot. Sometimes I get lazy, and I just pluck a nice little... Well, bit off and sure. you know, pack it in the bowl and, it's, and I'm good to go. I, I I get lazy sometimes. But you seen those people like where they they hand do an entire like joint or you know what I mean like oh well like that no. kind of thing and it's just no. no no because with a let's say you're gonna roll one right and if you just break it up you get those uh, tiny little nug balls <laughs> if you will. Um, w- that aren't completely broken into finer pieces. So then it gets lumpy and then it also, it's hard to smoke that it ends up getting, uh, it ends up getting clogged up. I don't know. I think it's always best to grind, um, when you can. And plus when you use your hands, you're breaking up all the little trichomes and well, yeah, unless all... you're going to like <laughs> when you're done with it. I mean, you just waste, you go wash it down the Brush sink or teeth something. with it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, okay. nobody else. Nobody else has done. No. That. So, what do you guys think? Give us, uh, give us a shot, and, and let us know. Prefer to grind or not? Uh, we're both to grind, grinders. To grind or not to grind? That's the question of the week. Tweet it. 
uh, Facebook it, comment below down here in the video. Uh, you can find us on all the, uh, ooh, I got a thing for this. You can find us on all the social platforms at, uh, boom, The Contact ooh. Buzz. So that's the at sign, The Contact Buzz. Be sure to stop it's by and so say hi. Right look at that, look at that. It's so cool. Right there, right we, there. we fancy, we fancy. <laughs> all right, so one of the stories we have today um it's a it's a it's a special treat for sure it's a special treat do we jump uh do we want to just jump right in right in? Let's, let's i think you it. should intro it it's pretty good I, I i think uh so every now and then we get out of the secret underground bunker and um we head over to other people's secret once a week secret above ground bunkers um <laughs> <laughs> once a week we're allowed out for 24 hours the sun is burning my eyes. Um, and uh, so we had a chance to actually go visit uh, with uh, some. Uh, he's a he's an old friend of yours. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Southern California grower. He's a mentor. Yeah. Um, still, he's a pro. Been rocking under the uh, the SB two fifteen and the four twenty for you know a while now. Prop fifteen two fifteen. And what we wanted 80, to do is is kind of uh, get his opinion. Uh, as a you know somebody that's kind of you know going on with things about the new regulations <laughs> he's like that are coming down, the micro brewer and, ty- type of guy. Right. It, it, he's, he's a small independent uh, independent operation, right? And he's been doing it for years. He's consistent. Uh, all his stuff is is great. And um, it's I mean when back in the day when uh, Jeff and I were doing Go Aqua Farms, um, this was about what seven seven years ago almost eight years ago mm-hmm. um he was the one that really gave us a shot like he had the greenhouse and he was like look i'll let you set up your system here and let's do some trials let's let's grow all these different kinds of plants i mean we he he vince is was a not only inspirational guy but uh just all around super cool dude so yeah anyways it's a great story um i hope you guys enjoy it let's do it wait wait, wait. aren't we sending this out to the guys in the field right Oh yeah, yeah. Let's okay. Uh, so sending it out to you guys, our on the spot correspondent. On the spot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. T- take it. Take it away. Take it away. On a leisurely Sunday afternoon, RJ and I took a trip out to hang with one of my longtime friends and SoCal master grower Vince. Lucky enough, we got a twofer as we were joined by his son and Padawan, also named Vince. This dynamic duo have been working with dispensaries under Prop 215 and AB 420 for nearly a decade. But as Master Vince points out... I've been smoking pot since I was 16. Okay, okay. <laughs> You're talking 50-year veteran. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was smoking when there were seeds and stems, you know? Back in the day, basically I've been in the nursery business for 40 years. Right. Since Ever since I was a kid. And uh, I was in the tropical plant business and palm business for many years. I sold to the Home Depot and I've had a, had a successful nursery for 40 years. When the nursery business kind of took a dump in the, uh, in the 2008. Oh, okay. It went all right for a long time. I did really well with it, and yeah. uh, I just I was done. I was getting older, and I was burnt out. So when I quit doing that, I, I figured, well, I got a greenhouse. I got all this shit. I, I'd like to grow pot. You know, I've always wanted to. I've done. I've done. I did it when I was younger. That's Back in the old Mexican pot days, where you had Colombian and Mexican and. They didn't, really, they didn't really come up with uh, Sensamia, which is a seedless pot, until like the late 70s. Mm. And, the, and they they finally figured out that if you pull the males, you get the females, you know, would butt up. Higher like potency. Yeah, and, the, yeah. and that's, that's when all the, the plate, the, the Humboldt County and all that started going off up there. Uh, Northern California started doing the outdoor growth. Before that, seeded pot wasn't worth growing. It wasn't worth taking the risk to go ton of seeded pot yeah because you're going to jail for sure. a pound yeah versus this stuff you know that even back in the late 70s they were getting two thousand dollars a pound for for cents a meal what they mm-hmm. were calling it so how does a grower with over 40 years experience in the tropical nursery business tackle cultivating cannabis well the vinces were kind enough to walk us through their setup so basically it was stage one two on up uh-huh. yeah. these have been here about a couple of weeks see that's the way they get they get nice roots like that. How long do you usually let it go? Like not These that. are ready to go yeah. into these. Into He's been here for about a week, two weeks, maybe. Two weeks, yeah. 
And what about maintenance on these things? Do, you, do they get clogged up a lot? Do you have to like... You change the water after every time you use it. After put, put like the sprayers or anything like that? Or yeah, they get clogged. You, you gotta take it all apart. You gotta bleach soak it all. Soak the whole thing in bleach water. Yeah. Basically, I just take it apart, stick it in there, fill it up with water and bleach. Yeah. And soak overnight. Yeah. And then, then rinse it all out, clean out all the little, uh, the little spitters. Yeah. Right. How about... Uh, Oh, that's clean cool. all these little spitters out. Right. And then it's got aeration going in there. But this, and then you can see how they start. They start rooting up in mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Ever had any issues with fungus or any, any kind yeah. of mold getting yeah. in here? This yeah. Too long, yeah. yeah. Mm. Sometimes they sit there too long. They get funky like this. Ah, uh, root rot. Yeah. Or stem, uh, rot. stem rot. After you get the best ones out, then you kind of put the leftovers all to right. the side. Right. Right. Natural selection, huh? Yeah. You're, you're gonna lose them every once in a while. As we migrated from the propagation room to the veg room, I was interested to see the difference in the growth between the single large cube versus the crumble. I mean, beginning like this, and then they, they go into a flowering room. They're just, these are just about ready to go into the flower. Yeah, it's just, it's so awesome that it's just like ready to go. Mm -hmm. You know, no bucket, no clay. Yeah. No. Or, or you can go this way. We, this is the best. It's just it's you, as easy. far as transferring. You're saying like getting it's easy to transport to it. It's easier to work it's with. Not a it. mess. You don't have all the all the bulk later on. Right. You know, it's, right. it's, it's you don't have to throw away a bunch of uh, soil and stuff. I mean, look at how many branches. You know, eighty percent. Like eighty percent like of your bud comes from the top twenty percent of your plant. Yeah. Right. So like you want you want all your. You want most of your plants to be up here, not like having like stock coming off the bottom. Yeah, it's wasted. Just, it's just waste. All the energy you want your the, most of the energy to be focused on you know, the top portions of the of the of the plant. I remember back in the day when I was first starting, I had you know I was trying to make a full on bush, and I ended up getting all these little wispy nugs at the bottom. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And then. I was thinking, okay, well, then I cut levels of it off to let them ripen as it went down. You can do and, that. But the thing was, I never, I, when I did the test to see overall yield was better when it was at, up right. at top, and mm -hmm. then the, the other ones, because they went they went like this and shrank to like little tiny balls when they were dry, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. What do you like better? Do you like, do you like the... Oh, I was hooked on the crumble. Yeah. But I like the cues now. Like I, there, well, it, again, it's it, look how many things you need. You need the crumble and you need the container, right? Yeah, you then you got to store the container, wash the containers. You can grow a pretty big size plant in the. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not that much bigger, but it, is, I mean, it can make. It but what about root size to to yield and to nug size? I mean, that's the. I, I always hear now the, the bigger roots you have. You're not growing as big a plant, so you don't need as big a root system for one thing. Mm. From from this to the pot, month and a half, yeah, mm. something so like that. The whole so that's uh, that's about a good foot of growth, uh, more than that. Oh, these these were probably only this big when yeah. we put them in there, and, and just look how much it's filled. This the plant gorgeous. Is filled out, you know. This is gorgeous. Yeah. Maybe a maybe a smaller, more dense nug. On this plant, or do you think it's like these big long colas? No, no, they're they're, they're yeah. no, they're pretty big, good size. The ones that, that, that we did is it before. a long cola, but it's like nug, 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 yeah, nug. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. It'll 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 fill out like the whole that whole stock will fill out. Yeah. But growing cannabis isn't all fun in the sun. We wanted the Vince's opinion as small independent growers on the new rules and regs looming January first. They do the laws. <clears throat> where they try to make so much money off of it, okay, by taxing... Square footage, the, the, you know, First of all, I don't know how the hell they think they're gonna, they're gonna follow a plant from, from seed to sale. It's totally, it's, it's a total idiotic way to do it. Do you, they People don't do that with the tobacco. To the, they sell on the They don't do that with tobacco. That, you, you yeah, yeah. The only way Our you can monitor it is by dry weight. Right. You can't you can't go okay you know I, this guy's got 99 plants he's gonna have okay say if it's outside he's got 99 plants so he should have 99 pounds or, at least or 200 pounds okay oh, yeah, say say like, he should have 200 pounds well what right. if something happens 
It's just like any agricultural crop. Fire. You no, know, it gets Yeah, they don't tag every apple tree. You don't tag every, tree. Don't tag every <laughs> almond tree. Almond tree. You, you know? can't it's just do by it that way. It's, it's practical. You know what? Agreed. It's totally impractical. Right. You what if a plant dies? Do it. You the only like... way you can do it is by dry weight. And see. And you can. And if you monitor your, if you have your growers to your distributors, your distributors test it and do what they got to do, and they distribute it to your dispensaries or however they're going to distribute it, and then the growers. The grower shouldn't even be responsible to pay any taxes, if you ask me. Mm. When I buy plants, I don't pay taxes, the retailer pays taxes. Right. You know? But right now, the distributor or the, or the transporter has to collect the tax in advance, so the, the, the retailer has to pay the tax in advance before it's sold. Yeah, but that's not right. I know. It's, it's completely <laughs> backwards. I yeah. don't get it at all. Why should it be any different than alcohol or tobacco? <laughs> yeah, right. you know? Right. Those two because it's more people every year than anything. Right. You know? Yeah. There's got to be a there's got to be a, there's got to be yeah. a place for the, the small grower, just like there's a place for the small brewer. There's a small. Yeah. You can't have not everything has to be huge, you know. Yeah. And that's one thing that's when, when we go about this with the licensing and all this stuff. What about the small businessman? You know, what about the small grower? The guy that doesn't want to have 50 employees and a huge thing going on just so he can be a pot grower. Right. The guy who, like we do, or you know, I've been running my own thing for, for a few years now, and I can do it by myself. It's my own small business. So, so why, you know, why, why, why can't I may, maybe have a business to do that too? Why you does can. it have to be somebody that's got hundreds of millions of dollars that's gonna, you know, set up a big thing? That's where you. The, the whole thing has to come to some kind of a, an agreement with these cities and these states and the, and the, the control and, and bureau, the, the control bureaucracy that it's going to go through. That's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be, some, it's going to be interesting to see how how it all turns out. Over the years, Master Vince has taught Padawan Vince everything he knows about the Green Force. Is now the time for the Padawan to become the Jedi. He's had a style, like my dad, the style of growing is a little bit different. Like his plants were shorter and like, you know, the whole plant he flowered out kind of. So when I'm doing it to where I have like, you know, like the top 30, 40, 30 percent of the plant is where all like the plant growth is. Right. And I've been like, with one of his rooms, I uh, went through and like really slimmed the plants down. And you can tell now they're starting to, the, the, the tops are starting to, you know, they're starting to stack more as to where his stuff was, you know, there's, a lot, more, there's a lot more stem in between the nodes, you know, there's a lot, yep. the, the nodes are a lot longer, so they're a lot shorter now. With, All the energy goes to those. Yeah, so it's just, instead of it like, up. budding and then budding and budding, it's like, right. bud, 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 you know? It looks like most of your stuff is hybrids, huh? Everything's a hybrid. But I mean, do you guys ever just go like a really indica dominant? Do you have like a really, just any preference in that? Or a sativa dominant where a long length? You know, I, I, for me, I found if you try and grow too many strains, it, it's, 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 it's just, a pain. You gotta yeah. concentrate on two or three. When you, find, when you find a couple that like work, and that sell like, Why not, you know? Right. Good, they try are those yeah. sitting on the same sh level as this? Yeah. So th those are some monsters, huh? Yeah. Nice. How long do you usually cycle a mother for? Like six months, a year? See, I, heard, I heard six months is like, I've heard that before, but then I heard like, mom can go like a year maybe. Definite. Yeah. yeah. Usually, I don't know. Yeah. Usually the best thing is when we, we, we take so many from the mothers until you get the strain developed. Then you just take it from the, the strain itself. So yeah, you, like I can go, I can go through here now and take. We'll go through here and take. And get, you know, I can get 500 cuts or something like sure. that. Sure. Like 200 cuts or whatever, you know. Right. And have a whole like a whole an army. Army ready. You know? Right. All at the same. I mean, time. a lot of this yeah. stuff does need to be like you know I could. Because the, the mothers get take a cut off of that, you know, there, here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, do that everywhere. Master Vince is also a bit of a visionary. Before we wrapped up, he shared with us a prophecy, his vision of the Green Empire to come. This is my idea, and it's a stupid idea. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. My idea is can a world, okay? Okay. Can you have a, a, a whole complex where you have... Oh, that face. That's the face you make when you were just thinking of the same exact thing the day before. Nothing but cannabis-related 
things going on. Okay, so you have say like a small town or something. No, 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 like a, like a, a, like a, a small towns. mall or or, or, or a, you know. Okay, so in one area you've got edibles, cannabis edibles. Another one you have smoothie edible. You know, you have smoothies. Right. You have cannabis yoga. People are into cannabis yoga like well, you wouldn't yeah, like believe. A, like a strip mall, not a yeah, strip you can even have like cannabis that. exercise <laughs> facilities there. You can have cannabis, you know, and and you, and you can even have a grow there. The whole thing, it's just can of world. You, you want to you want to go get cannabis, see what's in, you know, all the new, all the all the products, all the just that whole place just devoted to it. Almost like a spa okay. for cannabis, you yeah, know? Right. With like Glen Ivy, you know, like yeah. you know, mud bath, you can go to this massage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go smoke yeah. here, you can go try this oil, you can go get a massage yeah. with this oil. Yeah. Yeah. Can, Imagine a sauna. You can go to get a, take out a guy just in the vapor and whatnot. Yeah. 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 You can go, I mean, you go like, you go take like a half hour class on how to grow or like, you know, right. or how to tend to whatever, you know? How to cook. Cooking, uh, yeah. culinary, totally with it. I'm totally with it. Thanks for talking with us. Uh, we'll, I guess we can uh, say that that was a pretty kick-ass conversation with a boys here, father and son team. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll send it back to you guys in the studio. <laughs> that was a great segment, guys. Way to go. So, um, as you guys could all tell, the Vince's. Uh, the generations of uh, growing knowledge. That's right. And uh, I, I like the, the father and son thing. Passing uh, the torch, master to Padawan. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it's agriculture. It, it's uh, And plus, he's tropical plants, 40 years. You know what I mean? Dude knows his stuff. Um, it's funny. When, whenever we talk, we'll talk about... We, he was telling me about palm trees, you know, or he was talking to me about... Uh, some of these plants that it take forever to grow <laughs> right you know and cannabis can grow in just you know a few months so that's cool all right let's move it uh move it along here. move it along to um current current day we're going to start in the current day before we hop in the way way back machine i think and uh we're <laughs> we're going to hop all the way down uh to south africa where we've got a couple uh like uh uh really interesting uses of hemp in uh, in current technology and, we were uh, we were talking about this right we were talking about yeah, ford yeah. we were talking about making america great again mer, 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 right and mer, i was mer, and i was saying hey okay rubber, so rubber, let's rubber, say rubber, trump rubber, rubber, decides he just wanted to like decriminalize all cannabis right geez. and now hemp is 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 mainstream we're, we're putting it into everywhere it could be applicable and i mean so the, rj and i were talking about going back in time to the henry four days when he had that car and they were testing it by uh, you know with a sledgehammer hitting it hitting they, the hood they didn't of have, it, they it didn't, didn't have crash it. test dummies uh back they then. just used sledgehammers that's right, right. and so um this com these composites were made from hemp and plant material back then It'd be cool to have a revival with Ford now where we take the hemp and we put it into all these different uh, applications. For example, parts or the, the body or the interior um, composites. What? Tons and tons of, of applications. There's even now nanotechnology where they're thinking about taking burnt hemp particles and creating like these superconductors or these uh, special chips well so. that's that's kind of the interesting thing is like even though it's not 100 percent legal like you know one of the things that this story covers is uh, currently america uses over uh, was it uh, half a billion dollars of hemp products each year so it's yeah. almost like uh, one fifth of all right it's almost like um uh, agricultural imported stuff uh oh what's the what's that little rodent's name um that's not legal mickey mouse no uh ferrets <laughs> ferrets aren't legal in california oh right but i read somewhere that we are one of the lar uh, the nation's largest consumers of ferret food did you ferret have, products did you have ferrets no i want a ferret uh, but the wife doesn't ask you if they smell the wife wants an otter first <laughs> so i'm not i'm not sure how otters gonna... are damn cute but what the hell are you gonna have like a pool with super frigid water and right? clams all and over the place and rocks for them to break them on their chest no <laughs> you know I, don't... What I mean like how are you gonna have those so it's at like, first i thought she was joking way. about the otter thing but she's, she's not joking she's not joking like and there are 
there are ways to have an otter. They're they're obviously a high maintenance pet. Like you have to have a pool, and a pool has to be a certain like type of pool, and so on and so forth. Right. Because you know they're um, they're basically wild creatures. But she's so she should just get a broken down zoo. Well, and I, then I told her I says a ferret looks like an otter, and they're pretty <laughs> they're pretty much easier to get. Except they eat a different way and live a different way and. Right, they're, the they're environments obvi- completely They're obviously different. not otters, um, but you should yeah. just get a bunch of cobras and then get some like you know get them fighting, and make a movie. <laughs> so one of the other things uh, in this in this article that's on the on the site thecontactbuzz.com um, is uh, a couple features like in South uh, South Af- uh, South Africa. Uh, did I say that? Yeah, South Africa. Um, they're um, actually making houses out of hemp. Uh, this is happening all over the world, by the way. Hemp right, Crete just, is every, an everywhere but here. They have European countries, right? Every, everywhere but here, uh, basically. That are doing it. Um, but uh, there's also surfboards. There's a surfboard company down That's there. That's cool. Super um, light, super tough. Hemp fins, like diving gear. I would dig like to that. try to. Use, I would like to try to use those or just to test them out. Right. Yeah. So hemp fins and. Um, yeah, the, so the article is fairly in depth. I, I encourage everybody to go check it out. But realistically, what kind of what it covers is just the fact that right now, in other places in the world, people are benefiting from hemp. Like it is an industry. It is a yeah. We're getting yeah. all our stuff from where Canada, China, uh, some Eastern European countries. Well, right. and even as far as renewable resources go, like what you can make out of a, uh, you could stop cutting down trees and replace tons of what we use trees Paper. for with hemp and hemp has a mature cycle of like a hundred days or something along those lines so basically three months four months something along those lines that you can you know harvest and you're good to go whereas a tree is like, 10 years to, to grow it back up and- okay so think of this now imagine cotton for example compared as a fiber to hemp hemp is 10 times stronger so imagine if you had a t-shirt that lasted 10 times longer okay and to grow hemp versus cotton, hemp is way better on the environment because you don't need as many pesticides and you don't need as much nutrients. South Coast to, surfboards. You can grow them closer together. Um, it, it's just, if you've ever dealt with cotton, for example, it's a thorny bush, so it's, it's a pain in the ass to deal with, and it requires a lot of other input, and uh, that's not good on the environment. So why not use hemp? Hemp is definitely... an it should be in our um, library of things that we grow here and not have to import. That would save us money, and we'd be able to also dedicate more I wanted to, energy I wanted to, into research where we can use it in conjunction with other things like carbon fiber and hemp fiber combined, you know, those kinds of things. Go ahead. I wanted to uh, just call this out real fast because I yeah. thought this was interesting. I was looking for it here in the article, but... Um, you know, we were saying it's all over the world. It's not, you know, not just, you know, uh, totally. in one or two places. But here's a guy. This is, uh, he built a, in 2015, Nick, I think it's Voas, a farmer in Baswick in the United Kingdom, literally built his own hemp house after growing hemp on 300 acres of land. So he grew his own hemp and then used it to build his own house. That's, that, pretty, that's just one dude. That's pretty kick ass. You know what I mean? So imagine if you actually did industrialize that and you know take that to the the next level like, yeah you know housing problem solved or, well or something and it's Maybe lighter that's optimistic it's lighter and stronger it has fire resistant properties to it um it's it's kind of like why not use these better products that we can create sustainably versus the other ways that we're doing it which are just are not going to work if we want to live here for our kids to live here and their kids to live here i mean on earth so um we need to get get going with the the program as far as our concern yeah i mean it's not like this is you know some recent thing now we're gonna hop in the way way back machine (laughs) (laughs) all right going back going back 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 in time back twelve thousand bc in fact twelve thousand i guess it's like fourteen thousand 17 years i guess i think it's way 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 back farther than that way 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 uh, let's just say twelve thousand years ago okay and then and i think what this is is twelve thousand years ago is when it started to uh like maybe 
get out of the the area that it was centralized in. So according to this, uh, somewhere in Central Asia, about 12,000 BC, Mm -hmm. um, is generally when it's agreed that cannabis was first used by humans. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, it would have to have probably been a uh organic uh occurring kind of crop you know outside of that but um you mean like the winds are pushing it to well no what different it's, directions and what that's how it spreads what our skilled researcher has found out is it's more along the lines of it traveled via the trade routes it was one of the first uh actual, oh, yes, like agricultural course. traded yeah uh, things that you absolutely know, and from there 2000 BC, you know, into uh, Africa, and then it crossed over into South America in like 1800 AD, 1900 AD, up into, you know, where we're at, 1920, you know, into like right. the northern Canada area. And you look at the past and you see all the same benefits, medical, recreational, R- Right, that's cordage. exactly what it was used for. <laughs> Ropes <laughs> and medicine right. and, and everything. It's food. So it's kind of like... Um, I guess they were must be doing it wrong because, uh, yeah, how 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 did we make it to here and now you know what? No, we can't use this plant. This so the Spanish brought marijuana sense. and cannabis to the Americas in my the people mid, in the mid 1500s, <laughs> and the English introduced it at Jamestown in 1611, where it became a popular commercial crop, second only to tobacco. Right, well, there, there's a surprise. Well, we know because tobacco is more addictive. To tobacco's got nicotine in it. So. Sure, sure. You know, you can't make houses out of tobacco, <laughs> or you can't eat tobacco. Eh? 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 Tobacco doesn't cure anything either. Well, actually, they say since it's a poison, you can do stuff with it. You could use it as a, a, a pesticide. Um, well, it, if you it, soak the leaves in water and then you spray. I, plants with it. I've I heard. used to have, have a boss who was very uh, anti RJ smoking um, and took a particular interest in it. And he used to tell me the the same thing like every time he'd see me like have a cigarette, and that was uh, that uh, the tobacco itself was used as a pesticide for a long time mm. or something along those lines. Like something in that cigarette. You can literally die. You a, can literally uh, die from look, n- man, nicotine overdose. Hassling me about my smoking maybe hazardous to your health. I'm not talking about health. that. I'm just saying nicotine is a poison. So you could die from too also, much it's, nicotine. It's a cigarette. Like a cigarette. You could just call the whole thing a poison. You've got formaldehyde and shit in there. Like you're not going <laughs> to... That's a completely <laughs> different topic, but yes. It's like, it, oh. Because cannabis smoke doesn't the, have it's those. It's the nicotine uh, that did it. It's the nicotine. You know, the formaldehyde I was cool with, but no, now that I found out that nicotine was a pesticide, now that's, oh. That's, that's the breaker right there, huh? Right, that's the, right. the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, so enough about enough about RJ's. Oh my, uh, my sciatic nerve. Jeez. Uh, these, these composite stuff, I mean, that's that. It's just a better way to be doing things. I totally want to try those fins. Those fins look pretty sweet. Like you could go super fast in the water with those things, huh? Right. And the surfboard, I mean, again, if you know anything about surfboarding and fiberglassing and that kind of stuff, it just makes sense that you could use something else and get better results. Um anyways. Anyways, check out the story. I think it's it's good and it helps for people to start to research on their own and start to see these are places all over the world that are utilizing this stuff and it, they're they're successful with it. So, I think it's going to spawn more thought than anything, and and that's the whole purpose of these stories. Moving on. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Have um, have you ever heard that pot causes impotence? Yes. Specific, um, I believe it was the, the seeds, seeds, the seeds in pot. Yes. Well, that, uh, along <clears throat> with a few other myths, uh, have a nice little article over on the uh, the website here, clearing the haze uh, of what we do and don't know about cannabis as a medicine. Um, and it kind of goes into a few uh, a few of these old myths mm-hmm. um, that pot causes flashbacks, and it's like, well. <laughs> Maybe some lab somewhere mixed up their pot and LSD samples. We're not entirely, entirely sure what started that. Right. Um, I just see colors now. Uh, right there. <laughs> Uh, smoking pot leads to cancer. Now, th- this is one of those ones that has a... That's uh, a total lie. Whoa, whoa. Now, calm down there, sir. <laughs> calm down there, sir. This is... To get me fired up, RJ. Don't get me going, man. Don't, we're going we're gonna to duke this out Cannabis right now. Doesn't... Ding, ding, ding. Okay, get go. the third camera. All right. Um, 
so here's the thing, and and then you can you can you can retort. You can retort. I retort. Retort against my point. Go. Okay. Marijuana no. itself. <laughs> no. <laughs> marijuana, cannabis itself. Yes. Whether you're smoking the THC variety or you're doing a, a CBD Hem- or so, or whatever. whatever it is, right? Any kind of cannabis. Right. That okay. itself, not like a cigarette or unlike a cigarette, which has tons of chemicals that are in the cigarette that you're, uh, that are not natural to the tobacco plant. And those things are also causing cancer. Like there's no chemical within, uh, marijuana that causes cancer or that has been shown to cause cancer okay. or anything like that. In fact, opposite. Some studies say that it, it can help. However, the act of smoking the cannabis, the act of burning the leaves, the buds, the whatever, produces carcinogens and that is what can lead to cancer so yes the statement smoking pot I've, can give you cancer i believe there's a study true. out there we'll have to double check but i believe there's a study out there that proves that cannabis smoke does not cause cancer that it doesn't the smoke is bad for you which creates issues in terms of mucus and respiratory stuff but the smoke from cannabis does not cause cancer but that is so. Yes, that could also be true, and so could my statement because I'm smoke saying there's carcinogens, which is part of the, the ash, lungs. Smoke which is causes... part of the particulates <clears throat> that that you in, inhale. Like I don't care how good your screen is, or even what bubbler you're using or pipe you're using, unless you're unless you're, you're using, getting smoke, and that's why people do edibles. Right. People do, are do edibles vaping or, the, or something or else. The va- well, and even with the vaping, you got to be careful with that now. The saw, flavors. I saw a study coming out that some of the flavoring that people are using is I know good. Yeah. And stuff, and this is this is the thing for regulation. Is like you know what, the 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 I'll have to look it up, and I know I shared it on our Twitter account uh, and Facebook page. So if you guys go over there, you might be able to find it. But there's just to catch everybody up. There's a a, a chemical that is being used in some of the the vape pens and the different things like that to flavor it. That is known to give uh, a irreparable thing called popcorn lung. Like it's a disease that is irre- irreparable. Yikes. Like this was known because it was discovered when they were using it for like I think it was soap or or some sort of like uh, they were trying to scent some sort of other household product and mm. the people that were working in the factory were developing this condition and they linked it back to good this old chemical. popcorn lung. Right. So now Jeez. some dude in his garage is making up these vape pens these days and he's just using whatever tastes good. Like he's not over. <laughs> there's no oversight to that. There's no nothing. There's no I nobody just looking at that drops saying of hey. This tetracycly Something stuff right. that tastes like cherries. Okay. Right. I mean, how do you know there's not a little drop of uh, antifreeze in there because, you know, the tastes like sweet, you know, whatever. It, it, you don't. You really don't. So regulation Hence, is good. just go natural and burning it is the way it's been for millenn- at least 12,000 years probably. Oh, sure. Right? But, sure. But we also used to we burn do have the down technology. forests to hunt. So, I mean, <laughs> hashtag progress. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, oh, RJ, come uh, on, man! I'm not trying to be snippy. Don't it's get me just wrong. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we like look we at, used look to at do your that, volcano. But, come for, on. Look at your volcano, for example. Now that undeniably, when it's heating it to water vapor, there's no concentrating and putting it through. There's no ash. Um, like right. it, it just toasts, and, and I mean, unless you turn your your thing up way way high but usually you know 350 400 degrees and you just right. be patient with that it. to me is technology now and it's we're able to apply it to the vaporizing um of the thc and the cannabinoids sure so that i i do see as being a healthier alternative it, and there's virtually no drawback at that point right um but edibles also and and there's a reason why those exist because not everybody wants to smoke. Sure. And I get that. But I do think smoking is the way to really experience the full flavor, the, the, the body of, of the cannabis flower. Um, and, and in that way, maybe I'm a purist. I don't know. It's not that pure, but <laughs> moving right along. And there we go. <laughs> Gee, you know what time it is? It's oh, yeah. legal brief time. The briefings. Bring the brief. This brief will be brief. Brief, brief. <laughs> All right. Brief. Everybody quiet for the brief, brief. Uh, I wanted you to play the music longer. I just... 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. The music's distracting you. Get to it. Legal brief. All right. So the first thing on the legal brief is just an update. Keith Stevenson joins the task force. And I got a message from executive director Ruben Ho Nig. Ho Nig. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Dear task force members and supporters, every day our industrial our industry, excuse me, gets closer to the watershed of January 1st, 2018. Big day. That's the start date for California's licensed cannabis industry. While we wait for the release of the final regulations for the statewide market, we continue to daily advocacy and negotiations on behalf with our city council. It couldn't be more dynamic of a time, and I'm pleased to update you on some exciting developments in the task force. So essentially, we'll have a link below so that you can read the whole thing, but um, they're welcoming in some, uh, some players into the game. Keith Stevenson back to his home in Los Angeles and the team task force director of strategy as founder and CEO of Purple Heart Patient Center in Oakland, California, the city's longest licensed dispensary. I thought you said you were keeping this brief. Well, I just wanted to point out that this dude's a major player and he's recognized by the California state legislature as a cannabis subject matter expert. Moving on, you guys can read about this. I'll have the link below. Um, but I think it's some cool stuff. These guys are getting on the task force, and um, you know, they're real voices from the industry, not just your Joe Blow uh, politician guy who doesn't really know what we know. So, right on for them. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's one oh, oh, other oh, thing. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Whoa. Maybe I shouldn't have said brief. I meant underwear. So, uh, <laughs> of course you did. The Bureau of Cannabis Control is to host the first Cannabis Advisory Committee meeting. I think that's important. And that's uh, going to be in Sacramento at the Masonic Temple, 1123 J Street, Sacramento, California, 95814. It's going to be Thursday, November the 16th. And it's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. They are also going to live webcast it. Keep in mind, seating is limited, so get there early. <laughs> but uh, if you want to go to the meeting, it's public, so check it out. That's it for the legal brief this week. <coughs> Thanks, RJ. Moving right along. I believe. Um, you believe? I believe in a thing called love. You can fly. Uh no, what was I saying? Oh, I believe what we uh saying? we are pretty close to that time. Okay, it's the end of the show. Wow, right? Wow, where does the time go? Holy! Wow, it's flying by. That's right. So, recapping with all the recap stuff, we've got question of the week: to grind or not to grind. We've got grind, uh, grind, grind. Uh, um, the uh, the nice little field trip. Learned a thing or two. Uh, taking a trip on out there. We, uh, mm-hmm. we should you know have some more of that coming up here pretty soon. Can't say anything about it. Props to the V's. Props. The double V's. The double and, V's. Uh, I guess it's safe to let everybody know we're probably going to be heading over to uh, the Harvest Cup over in San Bernardino coming up here. Uh, That's right. That's we'll this be weekend. There. We'll have a camera, and uh, if you want to talk to us, feel free to say hello. And if not, we'll bring you guys all the latest and the greatest that we find there at the show. Yeah, so um, in case you can't make it. Uh, might even be getting a little backstage action. Not sure how that's uh, it's going to roll out there. So, Could um, be a surprise. Cross your fingers, everybody. <laughs> um, I think, uh, oh yeah, yeah, industrial uses of hemp going back 12,000 years. Yes. Insane. And of course, be safe. Uh, with your consumption, make sure you check out the uh, site for all the articles, all the information uh, coming up uh, from today's show, as well as there's some additional information. We always uh, try to share all of our health and safety and all that crap. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a video soon huh, about uh, how to make your own cannabis or hemp oil chapstick. That's right. That's I right. think that's going to be a good one because, hey, you know what? Snowboarding season's coming or skiing season's coming, so... I don't know if you're like me, but I get chat lips. So, anyways, it'll be kind of cool. I guess that's it. Thank you for watching. 
and signing off. Bye.